Um, when I was asked to speak about the uh, recipe for tomorrow, I actually recognized that I don't have one, but I decided to speak anyway and tell you about the vision rather than the recipe. And then uh, we can all think about uh, how to get there. But um, what I see from where I sit is, um, is uh, a truly amazing thing emerging globally. And uh, this is something that is called the global brain. Uh, this term was invented many years ago, and a few academics actually contributed to uh, evolving this notion. But the, uh, the fascinating thing is that actually tomorrow we can sensibly talk about it and try to predict how it, this concept will evolve in the next 10, 20 years. So I will start with... Uh, with a very simple but fundamental slide, which basically shows how many people will be connected to internet in, uh, in the next uh, five to 10 years. And the, um, the most fascinating thing is really the, the last piece of this um, curve which is actually connecting tomorrow and the next five years. And what we see is that another three billion people will get connected to internet. This is more than roughly two billion, which uh, we do have today. And this is uh, more than we're ever connected. In fact, uh, not a single technology was uh, growing at that pace. Uh, it is growing much faster than the adoption of the technologies like radio, television, um, mobile phones, and uh, the, the incredible uh, next 10 years would, uh, would see almost everybody connected uh, to each other, which is, uh, which is really a prerequisite to the emergence of this uh, global brain concept. Not only people will be connected, but also uh, devices. Uh, already 5 billion devices are connected today, but uh, this number will uh, explode to more than 20 billion in the next 10 years. And that combined with the um, 5 billion people will form this network of 25 billion connected entities. This is something that is called the Internet of Things when uh, non-humans are connected. Now, this slide um, I actually borrowed from uh, the next, uh, one of the next speakers, Eric Schmidt. Um, uh, but, uh, but I was so amazed and impressed by this uh, single data point that I decided to, uh, to steal it, but refer it back to, to you, uh, uh, Eric. Um, but it goes like this. The all, uh, all amount of information that was generated um, for the last 30,000 years, from the first you know, cave paintings uh, to the year 2003, which was not really such a long time ago, is equal to the amount of information that uh, only takes two days to generate today. Actually, it was 2010. I think today it's already one day. So in one day today, we generate equal amount of information that for the last 30,000 years until 2003. Now, this uh, time uh, scale will uh, be shrink to uh, almost one hour 10 years from now. Now, it's very obvious that new sophisticated algorithms will emerge that will help us to process all this information. Not only the information is being generated, but it's also increasingly being shared between people and devices. And this, uh, the pace of sharing is uh, truly exponential. I just uh, listed three examples, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, email services. But essentially, you see that just in the scope of the last uh, two to four years, it's, it's a multiple of uh, growth. It's uh, you know, 28 times more information is shared on Facebook between people uh, than uh, two years ago. It's not driven by the number of people that join Facebook, but it's mostly driven by the fact that the same people just exchange more information. 
It's actually called uh, the Zuckerberg Law. Mark Zuckerberg obviously was the inventor of Facebook, but it basically states that every two years, the amount of information that people share between each other doubles, sort of equivalent to the Moore Law. Not only we share this information, but we also increasingly consume it in a digital form. And uh, um, as you can see, uh, the digital media have uh, long time overtaken traditional media by a wide margin. This graph shows the daily usage of uh, different forms of media. And uh, you can basically see that the newspapers are very, very low on the list. The, the largest newspaper is actually uh, read by no more than 1% of, uh, of the relative population, while the largest internet properties enjoy, you know, 20, 25% usage on a daily basis. Um, unfortunately, this slide was not shown up properly, but, <laughs> but the bottom line is that uh, um, on the left-hand side here, you could see something very old, on the right-hand side, something very new. Uh, but essentially, uh, everything that can be more efficient uh, will be more efficient, and this efficiency is driven by this amazing progress in, uh, in technology. Uh, and this will go, this will uh, involve uh, electronic medical records, cloud storage, uh, content, and the uh, internet is really the, the tool of, uh, uh, of change in, in all these areas. Again, something is uh, unfortunately wrong with the slides, I can only see a part of it. Um, but I can try to explain you what this slide is about. So the, um, what you can see here is, is a small fraction of what was supposed to be on this slide. Um, but I will start with uh, Google. Uh, that really was uh, the amazing invention when uh, people took advantage of this unique feature of uh, digital information that you can actually connect different pieces of it uh, electronically and access uh, one uh, clicking uh, on another. This was an amazing invention that basically was the beginning of this new wave of uh, artificial intelligence. Um, another invention was Wikipedia, when um, in a very unexpected way, voluntarily people were able to develop um, the most reliable source of information today. All tests that were performed uh, comparing Wikipedia to Encyclopedia Britannica basically shows that they have roughly the same uh, number of mistakes uh, per hundred uh, articles, which is an amazing achievement if you assume that this is an absolutely uh, decentralized, uh, unregulated um, project with uh, hundreds of thousands of people participating in it. Of course, IBM Watson uh, was uh, another very impressive achievement uh, of last year when the uh, artificial algorithm uh, uh, built by people uh, that was using Wikipedia extensively was able to become the world champion in, uh, in uh, Jeopardy games. Of course, uh, more than 10 years ago, artificial intelligence was able to beat human being in, in, in chess and, and many other games. Um, but the point I want to make is really not about machines overtaking humans or humans really giving way to machines, but really something that is, uh, became known as a global brain, which is a combination of human intelligence and machine intelligence. And, and, and this is really the, uh, the emerging theme, I think, for the next 10, 20 years, when um, this unique combination of five billion connected minds and uh, millions of connected servers will form one single uh, universe that, uh, that will actually be um, driving a lot of uh, innovation uh, in the world. In fact, um, I, can, I can project that in, in the next few years, um, if you ask 
a question, if you, if you ask internet a question, you would uh, not be able to uh, basically tell who answered this question, whether it was an algorithm or, or a human being or a combination of those two. And this is an interesting phase transition that we're approaching. And by the, by the same token, you would not be able to tell who is asking you this question if you're able to answer it. Maybe this is an algorithm asking you the question that uh, uh, he wants to learn from. So this will, uh, this will really be uh, an interesting time when um, this uh, mix of human and machine intelligence will, uh, will emerge. It will be truly global. Uh, there will be no language barriers uh, because the technology is already available to instantly translate uh, um, um, anything between different languages. Um, the, the interesting uh, uh, anecdotal evidence is that our uh, brains are consuming about 20% of, uh, of our daily calorie intake and uh, the projection is that by 2020 uh, about the same amount of global energy will actually be con consumed by this global brain. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of obvious that the human brain evolution has reached, has reached its physical limits. Our brains cannot be uh, bigger. Uh, there are many biological constraints to um, our brains becoming smarter. But what we can foresee uh, in the next uh, 10, 20 years is the emerging of this global concept that will uh, unify human and computer intelligence. Thank you very much.